Hi, I am Adar, and today I'll be talking about the Cuckoo Tribe. Our work is about database indexes, and specifically an index for in-memory databases. Suppose that you have a database of cities, and you run a query to list all cities with a population between 1 and 3 million. Running such a query without scanning all the data requires an ordered index of the city populations. An ordered index is a data structure that indexes a set of keys that can also have associated values. It allows to insert, lookup, or delete a key. And most importantly, it can efficiently perform a range scan, which means listing all keys from a given start key to a given end key in a sorted order. This operation is what databases use for queries like the one here. For an index to be useful, it should be fast, and it shouldn't consume too much memory because most of the memory is already occupied by the data itself. Popular ordered indexes share a common problem. Ordered indexes are usually built from some hierarchical data structure, such as a B-tree or a tribe. To search these structures, we have to go from the root to a path of nodes until we reach a leaf. In each step, the address of the child we go to is stored in its parent. This means that the whole search is a process of pointer chasing. It reads a node, extracts from it the address of the child it needs to go to, and goes to read that child, and so on. The problem with that is that memory access is very slow. If we'll plot on a timeline the activity of the processor while it searches a try, we'll see something like this. The processor waits for a node to be read from memory, and it performs a little computation to choose the correct child pointer from that node, and then again it waits for the child node to be read. All in all, the processor just sits idle most of the time. What limits the search speed is the memory latency, not the processor speed. To accelerate memory accesses, modern processors have a feature called Memory Level Parallelism, or MLP. This feature allows the processor to perform several memory accesses in parallel, as long as they are not dependent on each other. Let's see an example. We have here a statement from a program written in C, and its translation to some imaginary assembly language. When the CPU executes these instructions, this is what happens. The first instruction reads a value A from memory location mem1, so the CPU starts that read. The second instruction reads another value from location mem2. Because this read is independent of the first one, the CPU starts it in parallel, without waiting for the first one to finish. This is MLP. The next instruction is the addition, which needs the results of the first two instructions. Now, the CPU waits until both reads finish, and then performs the addition. Here, MLP saved us a lot of time, because the reads were not dependent. Now, what happens when we search a tree? Trees don't benefit at all from the ability to perform memory accesses in parallel. The reason is that memory accesses are dependent on each other. We cannot start reading a child node before we finish reading the parent node, because the address of the child is stored in the parent. This dependency means that trees don't utilize MLP at all. We developed the cuckoo tribe, which is an ordered index that does use MLP. This means that it can be faster, because it is not limited to the same serial access pattern that other indexes have. It requires about the same amount of memory as other indexes, and it is also thread-safe and can efficiently use multiple cores. Let's see how it works. As the name suggests, the cuckoo try is built from a try. We put the keys that we index in a try, with the values in the leaves. However, Instead of putting the try nodes in arbitrary memory locations, we store them in a hash table, and specifically a cuckoo hash table. The hash table maps a key to a value, so the values are the try nodes, and the key of each node is its name, which is the prefix that it represents. This has two benefits. First, we don't need any pointers anymore. When we are going from a child from a node to its child, we know the name of the child, it's just the name of the parent plus the symbol on the edge. Therefore, we know where to find the child. We just search the hash table for that name. Second, and perhaps more important, our memory accesses are now independent. 
This means that we can read notes in parallel. When we search for a key, say in black, the notes that we read are exactly the prefixes of that key. This means that we know the names of the required, node, required nodes when we start the search, and we can read all of them in parallel. We don't have to wait for one read to finish before we start the other. Let's see an example. Say that we search for the key blink in this try. We know that the nodes we need are B, BL, BLI, and so on. The Google try searches for these nodes in the hash table, and the CPU performs the accesses in parallel. First, it reads the node B. Then, while this request is still, is still in progress, the CPU starts the search for the node BL, and so on. Once the read request for BLI returns, we see that this node does not exist in the hash table, so the key is not in the try. The requests for blin and blink are still in progress, but we don't have to wait for their results. This way, we have multiple memory accesses running at every moment, and the effective mem latency for each access is much smaller. A major issue with this technique, of putting the nodes in a hash table, is that of memory usage. In regular hash tables, each entry, each key value pair, stores the full key associated with the value. In our case, the keys are prefixes of the strings stored in the try. This means, if we have a long string in the try, we'll have many long keys, and the memory usage will be quadratic in the length of the string. Moreover, it means that our hash table will have to handle variable length keys, which will make it more complex. In the cuckoo try, we solved this problem by using the fact that the keys are redundant. Each key is just another key plus one symbol. For example, the key BLA is just the key BL plus an A. This happens because the keys are names of nodes in the try, and each node has a parent. So BLA is just the name of its parent, BL, plus one symbol. We designed a hash table that uses this redundancy to only store that last symbol in each hash entry. This makes the hash entries small and keeps their size fixed even when the try contains long strings. Now we'll show some results about the performance of the Cuckoo try. These graphs show the performance of the Google Try and a few other try-based indexes on different datasets. The datasets represent different types of keys, and each one is a few gigabytes in size. The left graph is for insert operations, and the right one is for lookup operations. In both graphs, we used 28 cores to run the indexes. We can see that the Google Try has insertion throughput that is comparable to that of the best index, and a better lookup throughput. The only dataset where this is not true is dataset AZ. This is a dataset of Amazon product reviews, and its keys share long common prefixes. For example, these two keys share a prefix of 18 bytes. This makes the try for this dataset very deep, so even though the cuckoo try reads a few nodes in parallel, it still has to traverse a long path in the try until it reaches a leaf. This graph shows the memory usage of the cuckoo try and the other indexes. In the current version of the cuckoo try, the user has to specify the size of the hash table at the start of the program, and the cuckoo try doesn't resize the hash automatically. We also added this column on the right as an estimate of the memory usage had automatic resizing been implemented. As you can see, the memory consumption of the cuckoo try is similar to that of the other indexes. So our use of MLP didn't cost us more memory. This is thanks to our hash table. It uses the queue redundancy to save memory. To conclude, the, the cuckoo try is an ordered index that uses MLP for better performance, but does it without consuming a lot of memory. As future work, we believe that this idea of using MLP can be used to accelerate other data structures as well. Thank you for listening.